We're here today to celebrate Dylan Fest, which is happening this weekend, Sunday, May 6th. And joining me in the studio are my pals from Talking Bob Dylan, Andy and Renee. Hi, guys. Hey, Mike. Hi, Mike. Nice to have you guys back in the studio. It's been a while. You guys have been so busy prepping for this and doing other things that uh, we haven't been able to knock another uh, the Talking Bob Dylan out in a while, but we will, right? Absolutely. We will Definitely. do we will do that at some point. <laughs> and before we go any further, because this is a Dylan Fest weekend, on the LA Radio Studio stream, you're going to hear all of the Talking Bob Dylans that have been produced so far in a marathon continuously. Wow. Ad, ad nauseum. <laughs> if, if you're not so good us yet, yeah. you will be yeah. by Sunday night. But I if like you it. love Bob Dylan, this is the greatest podcast ever, without a doubt. <laughs> and I love love the work you guys have done. But let's talk about uh, Dylan Fest. I, you know, I appreciate you guys coming in because you guys are right under the wire now of uh, having to get this thing together. Uh, everything coming together nicely? Yeah, it's going really well. Um it's funny, you know, every year we think, well, okay, when it's over, you're like, oh, my God, that was so great. And we have an after party and you've just, you know, played eight hours plus, you know, several hours of setup and you, you have so much energy. And then the next day you kind of crash and you're like, oh, my God, how did we do that? And then somehow, you know. It just rolls around again, and in January, you're like, oh, my God, it's four months away. We need to get rolling on this. So when do you start planning every year for this? This is the 28th year. Yes. That's unbelievable. <laughs> in, the, in the days after Dylan Fest, I start a, a document, okay. and it's ideas for next year. Okay. And a lot of it is based on things that came up things that could go a little more smoothly or just some idea. There was some accidental thing and we think, oh, you know, let's develop that right. into a big thing. And so that's, that's the first thing that I do. And then, uh, and then we do some stuff with the recordings, with the tapes of the right. show. Right. Uh, we, we try to get together videos and pictures and that kind of thing and put together some of the after events. We have a party for our, uh, our volunteers, our volunteer team, are called the Little Lebowski Suburban Overachievers. <laughs> now, Bob Dylan fans will know that Bob provided the, the title track or, or the main song to the movie, The Big Lebowski. Right. It's called The Man and Me, and we'll be performing that one this year for the first time. Uh, Sweet. We haven't done that one before. And uh, so we'll have a party for the volunteers. All the volunteers, right? Not yeah. just the uh, LL. SOs, but I think that's I know, the, it's, it's harder yeah. to say the acronym than the whole name. <laughs> right. And yeah. uh, the musicians are all invited because most right. of them of are volunteers as well. That's, right. That's correct. Right. Yeah, it's a good time to bond. And then we'll have a we'll have a separate uh, event where Renee actually prepares a fine dining experience for our VIP ticket holders, and we'll we'll talk about that a little later. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk about how people can get tickets because it's coming up this Sunday, May sixth, and uh, tickets are available, right? And yeah. They, how how do we get tickets, and what are the levels of tickets that people can get? Right. Well, the um the advanced tickets you save five dollars off the door price. So in advance, they're thirty dollars and thirty five at the door. Kids between seven and fourteen or ten. And um, you can either get them on our website, which is andyandrenee.com, and that's A-N-D-Y-A-N-D-R-E-N-E-E.com. And um, you can also get them at our shows. We've got a couple of shows before uh, Dylan Fest tonight. We're at Orlando's in Redondo Beach on the corner of Prospect and Torrance Boulevards. And then uh, Friday we'll be right here next door at Portsacal Restaurant. You guys See, ne never let up. You don't let Dylan Fest get in the way of anything, do you? <laughs> <laughs> we should uh, we should tell them about the VIP. Tickets. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So the VIP tickets are really fun. So we found that a lot of people, you know, they end up. We have t-shirts which are lovely if you're watching on our on yes. our video stream you can see have, the uh, lovely t-shirts lovely mugs very nice and um various things we also have shaker a uh, dylan fest shaker egg which andy's going to demonstrate right now very I'm, nice. I'm going to hold these up for the viewers <laughs> they're kind of hard to see because renee has rocked so hard with these <laughs> you can no longer see the dylan fest 
<laughs> emblem. Uh, but we have brand new ones for VIP holders, so you can be at home listening to Silvio or Like a Rolling Stone and there you you know, go. jamming along. All yeah, right. so. you might want to use a little more rhythm. I yeah, mean, okay. Well, that. Renee is the percussionist <clears throat> in the band, so there you go. No. she can give you your lesson. So anyway, so Shaker Egg mug, T-shirt. Uh, this year, uh, a beautiful your ticket. Oh yeah, you get to get in. Yeah, too. that's, that's nice. always good. Um, and then we have a new item this year, which is um, a ceramic Dylan Fest pendant. Ooh, very nice. Which has been uh, a labor of love by our friend Marilee Tadler. Very so really there's beautiful. that. Yeah. And then, um, as Andy mentioned, if uh, if you're available uh, the day we have the dinner, you're invited to dinner. And often uh, we. We reminisce about the show, and uh, sometimes Andy and I play a song or two. We play video clips of, of you know, whoever took videos of the show. We try right. to get those together in audio clips. It's a great time. And then, and then all the VIPs are entered into a drawing before the show. And uh, at the show, we will draw a single name, and that person gets to count in like a Rolling Stone from the best seat in the house, <laughs> center stage, looking out at the audience. That's fantastic. And you, do you always close the show with like a Rolling Stone? Uh, we have for many years. We yeah, have. It's a it was, natural, wasn't isn't it? always, but uh, oh, really? We've we've kind of. That's sort of the closer, though, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I would think well, it's named time after time by Rolling Stone magazine or various sure. readers' polls as the greatest rock and roll song of all time. So. It's hard to beat that. Right, <laughs> right. Back in the day when we used to have it in the Andy's backyard, we basically played from like noon until the cops came, oh. which sometimes was midnight. Yeah. Um, and uh, so after the cops would say, you know, like, you got to shut it down, we'd, we'd, I think we'd shove in like, I shall be released always seemed to be like yeah. the last kind of final song right. after the cops came. Right. Well, now those early days, did you charge or was it just friends or how did, how did that work? Well, the, the very first one we, we did because we had read Cameron Crowe's liner notes in Bob's five album retrospective biograph. Okay. And he talked about a party he attended in New York City where the guests were asked to come dressed as a character from a Bob Dylan song. And we saw this and thought, you know, from our place of nerdiness, uh, <laughs> right. that's the yourself. best idea no. <laughs> I've ever seen for a party. It is. And, uh, and we thought we're a rock band and we know a whole lot of his material. We could put on an even better party. Sure. So the first one was held at the Hermosa Saloon uh, on 2nd Street on PCH there during the time when it was still mandatory smoking in oh, bars. okay. And, and that was a costume party. So you had people, uh, you had men dressed just like a woman. Sure. Somebody came dressed like a rolling stone. That was pretty funny. Probably a lot of leopard skin hats. It, 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 that right, was me. Renee yeah. was the philandering uh, girlfriend <laughs> in brand new leopard skin pillbox hat. A character I just she I just occupied wish... with very little effort. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I just wish he'd take that thing off his head. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, that well, that's a whole other topic, maybe for a future podcast. <laughs> right. Dylan is known for his scathing social critique and personal animus, but he is a really funny guy, and that song is one of the examples. I <laughs> I love the ver the verse. Uh, well, I asked my doctor if I could see you. It's bad for your health, he said. Uh, but I disobe I disobeyed his orders. I went to see you and i found him there instead oh. i don't mind him cheating on me i just wish he'd take it off his head your brand new leopard skin pillbox right. hat. so you see the doctor with the girl's <laughs> pillbox hat right yeah. that's great so it's evolved over the 28 years and the set list it changes every year a little bit i mean i'm sure there are foundational songs that just have to get played every year, right? Yeah, and there's and that is without you know without feeling bad about it. No, of course first of not. all, uh, we started this in 1991, and so you can imagine uh, 
28 years ago, we already thought that there was a body of work so big and varied and wonderful and mesmerizing that we should be doing a whole uh, night of it. Right. And there's been 28 years since, and he's continued to record in that time. So sure. one of the things is that every year somebody plays at least one song that has never been played at a previous Dylan Fest. Mm. And this year, I counted them the other day, there are six Six songs. Brand new ones, yeah. Yeah, that have never been played in the last 27 years. Yeah, so you have to, you know, we want to make sure we get those hits in, right? Sure. Because a lot of the people who come aren't Dylan Files. Right. You know, they, they, they like what they like or they're sure. a fan of our band or some of the performers that are uh, guest performers. Yeah. But not everybody, you know, wants to hear some deep cut off uh, New Morning, right? Right. <laughs> so, um, I mean, does anybody? No, I'm just kidding. Um, so anyway... Uh, you know, we want to keep it fresh for ourselves. Sure, you know? of course. And uh, but yet, you want to make sure you get those hits. And another way that we're kind of making sure we change it up is where songs are played. Sure. So this, you know, the show is an eight-hour show. So it sounds really daunting to an audience member to think mm. that they're going to come to a show for eight hours. Um, so they might just come for a few hours at any point in the show. Sure. And maybe, you know, they've been a few years and they always tend to come at the beginning. So you don't want to have the same songs at the beginning every time right. because maybe that's all somebody comes to. So you do we, mix it up, mix it up, uh, mix up who sings those hits, you know, Good. some and get different versions and things like that. Well, and Dylan, Dylan is also he's a he's a crossover writer. So he's written a lot of stuff for other people. So if, if these people that come that aren't into Bob Dylan, they may hear a song that somebody else recorded and they go, oh, I didn't know Bob Dylan recorded that. Very common. Yeah. It happens every year. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So that's this Sunday. Uh, let's play, unlike your show, which we play all your tunes, you guys doing Bob Dylan, today we're going to play some Dylan tunes. And I ask... Uh, I asked uh, Andy what song he would like to hear, so we're going to listen to that one right now, and we'll be, we'll be back in a couple minutes. There's a couple of songs by request by our guests today, <laughs> uh, Andy and Renee, who are here to tell us about what's going to go on at Dylan Fest. Uh, who Killed Davey Moore? And um, then the John Birch Society blues song, which was on an album, and then they took it off. Can you give us a little quick history of that? That song, uh, uh, my, Andy? My understanding is that it was never going to be on, uh, let's see, what is it, the one where he's in the on the front with uh, Free Susie Rotolo. Yeah, it was written for Freewheeling, but it was never going to be on it. That is the famous song that he was going to play on Ed Sullivan. Right. And uh, it, it, they got worried that there would be some sort of uh, libel mm. issue and Ed Sullivan asked him not to play it, and Bob said, all right, and he left and went home. And didn't and, ever appear on Ed Sullivan. Right, right, and that's one of those famous, like, you just can't get any cooler than that, because <laughs> that was the biggest entertainment show in the world at that time. That's right. And Bob Dylan walked away from it. The Rolling Stones, on the other hand, changed the lyrics to their song, Let's right. Spend the Night Together, to Let's Spend Some Time Together. Right. Uh, Jim Morrison was asked not to say the word higher and, and light my yeah. fire. And, and he went ahead and did it. Right. <laughs> right said, in the he, camera, right? Yeah. yeah, he said, okay, no problem, I'll edit it. <laughs> and then, you know, mugged right in the camera. And they I don't think they were ever no, invited no, back. Never, <laughs> never again. <laughs> but uh, but uh, Davy Morris is something quite different. Uh, yeah. It's sort of a bookend. Yeah, I mean, you have John Burt Society Blues, and it's it's scathing. Um, but it's funny, you know, you, there's sure. different ways to make your point. And um, so that song, to me, is just hysterical and just, you know, reflects the paranoia that was going on at the time. And Davy Moore is so, you know, I, I'm more familiar with a live version um, that was on um, Halloween. There's a great concert that he mm. did. Um, and and I, I, just listening to it again there, it's it's so relevant today in the sense that the song is about it's not it's not my fault it's somebody else's fault somebody else's fault somebody else's fault and in 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 essence it's everyone's fault but nobody wants to take responsibility right and i particularly 
um, it, it struck me, you know, recently there was the, um, the White House Correspondents' Dinner, and the comedian who, who did her, uh, her, right. her show really got a lot of flack. And, um, you know, whether you thought it was funny or you thought it was um, uh, inappropriate, um, I think that the speaking truth to power is, mm. is the point. And uh, people who don't have power showing the people that do have power what they're doing wrong or getting them to hold up a mirror to look at themselves, sure. which includes the media. Right. You know, she said at the end of her her, ta- her, her set that, you know, you guys are the ones who are making all the money off this, what's going on now. Right. And you kind of enabled it to happen. That's right. And I think in that verse when he mentions the sports writer. Um, anyway, I, I think that song is incredibly powerful and and needs to be listened to. And Dylan today. was always enamored with boxers for some reason. He, yeah, he's yeah. a big boxing fan and boxed himself. Oh, he did. So, yeah, as a as young man. I, I don't, didn't realize I don't, that. I don't, I don't think competitively. Right. But he, uh, he trained in that way. And one, I haven't listened to that song in a long time, and I was stricken by, uh, it, it's an example of how he manages to get so much into a song and really see the big picture of something. It reminded me of Only a Pawn in Their Game, Mm. which is essentially a song about racism, but he manages to paint a picture where you you can't just point your finger at some immoral person, that there is a structure in place that holds itself up from various uh, points. And he just went through them all in that song. I couldn't help but think about that movie recently about the uh, head injuries to football right. players. It could have been the same song. Yeah. Well, he, that's the that's the beauty of Bob Dylan. His songs, you know, you they they are so universal and so dateless. They have no mm-hmm. they 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 can be applied to pretty much any time period that he's been around. It's it it it's always amazed me that. Uh, his writing is so universal in, in what he does. And I think in one of our podcasts, Andy, you spoke to that with regard to the, the language, language he use, <laughs> um, and how he'll, like in Blown in the Wind, he, uh, he refers to how long must the cannonballs fly. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's not like they're using a lot of cannonballs right. now, but, you know, it's, it, it, it grounds it in both historical warfare and current warfare. That's right. And it doesn't just marry it to one time period. So we're going to hear a lot of Bob Dylan on Sunday. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things that have become traditions, shall, shall we say, at, at, the, sure. at the show. Uh, I go every year and I just, I'm amazed at how great it is. And, and, and always am surprised by the, the different little uh twist you do to make <laughs> make it even more more interesting a, an experience well when when you do a show that's eight hours long there, there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff to take care of and so we started writing into it mo- bigger crowd participation moments right. where people could get that seventh inning stretch and make sure make sure they're not always being told to think about this lyric here sure that they would uh, be able to have a lot of fun so uh, we recreate the dylan's video of subterranean homesick blues uh, dylan fans will be very familiar with him standing in an alley and uh, with a very nonplussed look on his face and <laughs> holding a stack of cards each of which has one word on it and it's a lyric to the song and he drops them as they get sung and when the last one is done he drops it and he walks off and i think alan ginsburg is off to the side and bobby (laughs) newerth is walking around somewhere uh well we get ex laker girl trish luzio nice who is, uh, you know, <laughs> defines cute and rhythmic, <laughs> and she hops around and throws these cards all over the place, and people crowd around her to help her because, you know, she doesn't know the words as well as Bob did. 
Uh, so she sometimes needs a little help. Right. Plus, they're like cue cards. You know, they're, sure, they're, they're big, big and they're yeah. heavy. You know, it's a lot of them. So yeah. she's not very big. Right. You know, so she has to carry these and then, you know, she's licking her fingers to get, you know, to, to get the cards to move and stuff. And, it, and then per- often and the wind's blowing. And you, you, and, you put know. her up on a little perch, too, don't yeah. you? Yeah. 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 We, we, yeah, we want to make we, sure we see her. Yeah. yeah we want, because, yes, people crowd around her. And if we needed to get her up higher so right. that the rest of the audience could see her. Um, and then we have a choir. Yeah. Well, oh, the choir sort of, the really dancing great. choir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was, that was, we actually did that. Um, we've done that for a really long time. I, All the way back to the backyard. Yeah, when really? it, yeah, yeah, the show. And then we didn't have choir robes. So uh, we had make we we used giant garbage bags and oh, put everybody sweet. in giant garbage bags with a hole for their head. I mean, after the first year, we added the hole for their head because yeah. like, the first year didn't end so well. But anyway, yeah. yeah. And now we have actual robes, thanks to our friend Jerry Chaudhry. She she gets some from a, a local church, and it, you know, it's just fun. It's really we. One of the things that we thought would be amusing to us is, uh, you know, Dylan is known for these arcing melodies where he glissandos his way up and away from the note, sure. and it would be funny to actually have choirs doing that, right? So, the early choirs were instructed to sing like, oh, mama, oh, it must really be the end. And it, <laughs> and it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, let's see, what else do we have? Um, well, my favorite moment is when uh, you guys do uh, uh, Rainy Day Women. Yeah. That's, Numbers 12 and 35. Which some people, when you just say the title, they don't really know what song you're right. talking about, right? But that's the... Everybody must get stoned. It was a big hit for him, too. Yeah, and we, sh- we should probably take this moment to let your audience know that, yes, we know that the song is not about doing drugs. Uh, it comes up all the <laughs> time. Or maybe time. you're telling them it's not about doing drugs. <laughs> the, uh, it's about persecution. You know, y- you never say to the friend that you want to go and do drugs with, let's <laughs> Stone Renee, yeah. you know, you you, you know you, you do that when you want to go and and punish them for violating something. Right, you know, it's it's a reference to an ancient. Um, so so yeah, what we right do, on cue. Yeah, what we have done is we've manufactured hundreds of these uh, foam rocks. If you're watching, yeah, and uh, and we. We distribute them to the band members, or not the band members, to the audience, right. and they pelt each other uh, with them. It's a great moment. And the whole, it, I mean, you've got, you know, 500 people throwing these foam rocks at each other, and it's super, it's really fun. Unfortunately, most, I think this one's so big we could probably make it into two. <laughs> but anyway, usually we're, if you're not watching, we're, we're actually chucking these things at uh, each other as They're we're doing our practicing. Yeah. Mostly it turns into let's kill the band. Oh, <laughs> so they the throw at the stage. Audience, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so my my what I'm usually doing is just bending over to pick up rocks off the stage and throw them back and getting them into circulation. Of course, there was one time when a player who's named Dave Takaji shall remain <laughs> nameless uh, dipped his into a beer and threw it at us. Yeah, because they're kind cool. of spongy. Yeah, right? not cool, Dave. Yeah. Not cool. <laughs> Yeah. If he's listening to this, he's going, oh, yeah, I got to do that again. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Anyway, it's super fun, and it really gets the crowd energized, and we kind of try to put it in a space where in the day where it's like, okay, we need these people to get up. Because, you know, you can walk around at the show. You don't have to just sit in your chair. It's not like sure. theater-style seating. We do have tables and chairs, but you can bring, like, a beach chair if you want. Um, and people, you know, some people sit a lot. Some people walk around and, you know, talk a lot. You can dance. You know, you can do all sorts of things. And I might mention the venue is absolutely perfect for what you guys are doing, I think. Because there are, like you said, you can if, if you want to get get away from the music, there's a little hall you can go into and, right. and, and rest for a second. There is tons of great food and Adult beverages, I might add. Yes. I had a couple myself the last time. (laughs) 
I admit it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have um, Chef Schaefer, Michael Schaefer from the depot. He provides the food. So if you're coming, uh, come hungry because the food's great. It is good. And um, and it's reasonably priced. Very reasonably yeah. priced. Yeah, and we, we he also, as, as Mike mentioned, there are adult beverages. Correct. Make sure you bring an ID. And uh, we, we can't have any outside food or beverages right. just because of, like, legal reasons. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Oh, but and there's... also no pets because, oh. of, because of insurance. Oh, yeah. okay. That's and also You thing. know what? We should probably say for the first time, because of uh, a groundswell of uh, requests, we ask that people don't play their tambourines or harmonicas during the performances. Mm. So, uh, in the crowd. Too many yeah. tambourines. In, in the crowd. Too many tambourine yeah. men. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can do it during that song. That, that's funny and that's great. Right. But it's, uh, people find it very distracting when there's a sensitive ballad being played and someone's <laughs> wailing away on their tambourine. <laughs> Maybe yeah. somebody that had too many of those adult beverages. Right. Maybe. Right. Yeah, we're going to be uh, keeping our eye out for you, actually, oh, Mike, now, stop now it. that you've mentioned stop it. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've behaved myself so far. <laughs> I plan on doing it again. <laughs> now, uh, we got to talk about last year a little bit because you had a little bit of an issue last year that turned into actually kind of some magical moments. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, 27 years of Dylan Fest and uh, no years of rain. We've had wind. It's been cold. Um, it's been really hot. We've had everything in between. But last year, it was this all week, is it going to rain? Is it not going to rain? The three days before, is it going to rain? All the way up till the morning of the show, Andy and my husband Patrick call me from the venue they'd gotten there before me, and they're like, well, what do you think? Set up inside or outside? And the weather report was just very kind of nebulous. It was like, it's, right. you know, 40% now, 60%, 30 oh, God. So... We had a, you know, we were expecting a lot of people, so we decided, okay, we're going to set up outside, which went fairly well. But we did have a, con a contingency plan. We have, you know, huge tarps, and uh, we had those at the ready. And uh, we have a, a guy on our mailing list who's a tugboat captain who has a really, really good weather app on his phone. Uh -huh. So about, I don't know, a couple hours into the show maybe, he said, hey, there's a cell coming. It's going to rain for 15 minutes, and then it's going to stop. So we're like, all right. So sure enough, it came. We pulled, It was like a baseball game, right? We got the, the ground crew out, and we covered up the field or the stage. And um, and I think you actually finished a song, right? You well, this was the first time. So that we it rained, and then and then we it got clear again. Okay. So now four hours into the show, he comes up, or our friend Sandy comes up and says, "There's going to be a cell moving in. It's going to rain really hard for at least an hour." Whoa! So it was like, oh god. Okay. So we we're I'm like, you know, let's get as many acts on as possible, and so. Uh, Jay Constable and Nate LaPointe, who are in a band called Barley, were um, ironically playing the song, It's a Hard Rains Are Gonna Fall. Right. Nice choice, yeah. boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so we made it through that somehow, but it was just too much tempted fate. And uh, Belly Love, a great band, was up there just rocking. And I was off the stage, and I feel the first drop, and I'm like, oh, man, this is it. So I had, you know, kind of grabbed a bunch of people i'm like we got to get these tarps up right now so we grab the tarps from one side we start pulling it over the musicians heads i'm like keep playing mm -hmm. and we got the tarp and we covered the entire stage and they kept playing it was great it was a great moment i thought and uh you know that's 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 you know, we're joking about it, but that's serious business. You don't mix right. rain with electrical gear yeah. because it can it can be it can well, be deadly. Yes. <laughs> it was like a living organism. The the way the audience, the sound crew, the other musicians came together to protect the equipment and then get it in inside and and all of that or some of that is captured in this year's program oh beautiful this is the uh andy and renee and hard rain 28th annual dylan fest program that'll be issued to everybody who comes in the door and the theme is the rain and how we managed to get through that beautiful. shelter from the storm and we set up 
uh, we had some gear in our car and we set up a small PA system in the gymnasium next door and 200 fans would not re refuse to surrender and uh, they didn't several hundred went home as you know uh, we thought everybody would have but right. uh, several hundred stayed around and we played as much of the show as we could yeah we played another three hours right. i think yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, we we got a lot in yeah and i i'll say that the when you say you know it was kind of cool i i i'm I'm glad to have gone through it. I don't think I need to go through it again. <laughs> um, but I think what was uh, it was indicative of in the result was just to show what kind of a community of people come to Dylan Fest sure. and you know and to our shows as well. Absolutely. Um, you know, people were just so willing to help. They were willing to stick around. They're willing to do anything to help make it easier. Not one piece of equipment got ruined, uh, which is a miracle because there was a lot of water. Yeah. And um, and you know the mu most of the musicians stuck around. It was just it was fabulous. Yeah. We're we're gonna play another tune now, and then we're gonna come back, and I want to talk about the musicians that are playing because right. that's an important part of this. It's it's you guys and your band Hard Rain, but it's a it's it's a who's who of Southern California musicians that that play with you guys. So we'll get a preview as to who's going to be joining joining us. You're listening to live from the LA radio studio, a Dylan Fest special, and we'll be back. Live from the LA radio studio, Bob Dylan from uh, Blood on the Tracks and uh, Shelter from the Storm, and hopefully we don't need Shelter from the Storm this year, right? <laughs> yes, Hard please. rain isn't going to fall. <laughs> yeah. So is that song banned from the uh, set list now? Or uh, Yeah, we'll try to be more careful about the <laughs> well, song we, selection. We named our band that. That's that might true. not have been that good not of an a, idea not a in good retrospect. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, this, this is the first year. Uh, and I posted it when I posted it on Facebook. I posted a billboard for Dylan Fest. That, is that the first year you've had a billboard? Well, yes. Um, just crazy. We are so so fortunate to you know Annie and I've been playing together since the the mid '80s, and you know mostly in the South Bay, uh, you know, of Los Angeles, south of the airport. And we just have the most amazing friends and fans and mm. community that have formed around the music. You know. And one of the one of our most dedicated uh, supporters is Randy Bowers from Malaga Bank. Mm. And uh, Malaga Bank is a community bank. I think they have six locations in the South Bay, and they're really, really supportive of the arts. I know they're a big supporter of the Grand Annex and the Grand Vision Foundation and uh, various charities and a lot of businesses. And, um, you know, they have for years been really supportive of Andy and I and Hard Rain and of Dylan Fest. And this year they just went above and beyond the call of duty and um, put Dylan Fest on one of their billboards. So in Redondo, South Redondo on PCH and Avenue F. I was going to ask you where it was. It's a good location, it yeah. sounds like. Yeah, it's yeah. great. And we've got a lot of people, you know, who've, hey, I saw your billboard. And, you know, uh, our idea was, you know, to, you know, this is a... An event that's, you know, Andy and I are, are the producers of it. We don't have, you know, a big advertising budget. We don't have a, a lot of, you know, big sponsors. You know, sure. Budweiser's not coming up and giving us a pile of cash to do a bunch of advertising. Hey, maybe you can get Bob to sponsor it next year with his new whiskey product. There you go. That's right. As our friend Jimmy <laughs> Sachs says about Heaven's Door Whiskey, don't <laughs> knock, knock, knock <laughs> it until you've tried it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was just announced this week. Somehow, I, I don't, you know, somebody talked Bob into that, right? He had, had to have. He supposedly is a whiskey guy. You know, really? maybe he like saw George Clooney sell his company for a billion dollars and thought, you know, I'm, I'm a little short on cash. I almost didn't get that $960,000 from the Nobel Committee. Maybe I need to pad my pocket. So, anyway, you, anyway, did, you so, got the billboard, and then uh, who, who does. The same person designed the billboard that designed your uh, program? Yeah, so um, we have a, a friend named Bill Colantoni who um, is our initial graphic designer. So I kind of um, come up with the ideas for the posters and the, all the graphics. Um, sometimes I'm, you know, I know what I want, like, right before. Um, right. And sometimes I have to kind of think about it, but... Um, but I'm not a graphic designer, so I kind sure. of, you know, I send him images and fonts and, 
ideas of colors and then we kind of work together of course everything you know is run by Andy and um, and then we come up with an idea and fine tune it and so he comes up with, with the original the initial you know um, that with the uh, graphics and then Maureen Bray at Malaga Bank um, Randy uh, is very nice to have um, her available to us. And so she, you know, takes the graphics that Bill and I come up with, and then that's what ended up on the billboard. And that's what comes up on the T-shirts. And and you can't really talk about the program without mentioning Sandy Behar, who is sort of... Um I don't, how how would you describe exactly? She's sort of like the producer in Wag the Dog. She's like the <laughs> Dustin Hoffman character in Wag the Dog, where you go, well, what does a producer actually do? And nobody can really say. But then if you're around her, she's always putting something together, running something by a team of people, moving this picture to that place, wow. coming up with a different theme, ha harassing somebody to get something <laughs> turned in you know two weeks before it's due she's already on your case that's um, called being professional andy yeah yeah and the, re <laughs> the result is this wonderful addition to the show you know for 20 years we you know we it sat in the back of our minds that wouldn't it be nice to have a a uh, program and it was w just way out of our ability well, to just put too it much to do you know sure. be like yeah. oh yeah should we learn the songs or make a program <laughs> yeah. and then when, you know when we when we had um the support team andy was referring to earlier the little lebowski suburban overachievers i love it that really you know kind of pushed things into us a, a higher gear because then you know there were some wonderful friends and fans who were actually willing to do some act you know things that we we could have done but we just don't have time to do sure and you know you always um people like to help and we are so indebted to all of the volunteers so sandy um kind of oversees the project and maureen bray again from malaga bank they work on the design and put the program together and the program is just every year it's always just it multi-page beautiful full slick color, yeah. full color and it's and and then there's a program in there that tells yeah. you where the songs are going to yeah. appear and all of that. Yeah, There's right. photos. We have amazing photographers that come and take photos. Jackie Sackheim, uh, David Lassen, Tess Inman, uh, Al Butts. Glover, Donna Butts, lots of people. And sometimes we just, you know, maybe it's a picture I took or my husband took sure. or anybody, you know. But mostly those those photographers, we use their phot their pictures. And um, and then we have people who, who write essays for the program. Right. Um, Discuss. This year, yeah, this year we have, uh, we're missing our rhythm section of Dave Batty and John Hoke, uh, two just fantastic musicians who have played all over the world with, uh, with big acts. They both played for the late, great John Stewart for mm. the last uh, couple of decades wow. of his life. And they are typically our bass player and drummer, and they cannot make it this year, and they were kind enough to submit an essay each for Sweet. the listening or the reading pleasure of uh, the people who attend the show. And it should be noted that this is not an extra charge. This comes when you when you walk in the door and you give them the ticket, you get a program. Right. And, and you get some you get a, a a bracelet. I think that's more yeah, of a security thing, but it, yeah, it's but a nice little yeah, bracelet. It says Dylan Fest yeah. one of those rubber eyes kind right. of bracelets, yeah. And then um also when you get your ticket, there's a thing on the back where you put your name and your email and then oh, we have right. a drawing. So we have a raffle kind of throughout the course of the day and you can win, win. swag. Yeah, we got um we have, uh, you know, CDs, some of our CDs, CDs from various performers. There's Andy's kind of holding up. We have 15 yeah. CDs. There you go. Uh, that's also hold them all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's actually part of the <laughs> okay. VIP package, too. This is only too. half of them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you get a CD, too, in the VIP package. And then um, and we've got a really beautiful Dylan, a book on Dylan with all of his lyrics. And, uh, nice. oh, you get three-day pass to the Topanga Days fair which is over memorial day weekend which we'll be playing at so lots of things you can win in the raffle as well all right let's before we talk about the musicians and then send you guys on your way because you got lots to do uh let's talk again about how people can get tickets and the details and where it's at and all of that you can get your tickets right now at our website andyandrenee.com and they're 30 dollars at the door they're 35 and if you want to be a great 
patron and friend of the band, you can get a VIP ticket for $100, take home all this great stuff, shirt, mug, CD, shaker egg, go to Renee's house for dinner <laughs> and go to the show, maybe even count off like a Rolling Stone. There you it go. It doesn't get any better than no, that. No, it doesn't. And, you know, you go to a show now, and I don't know if you guys, you guys are playing all the time. You never get to go to any shows, I guess. But you can't get to, you can't go to a show for under $30. And this is eight hours of music. Yeah. And it's, um, I think one of the things that, it, it's so amazing, and I'm always reminded, you know, when we, ha we had our first rehearsal the other day, and, you know, we've been doing four months or more of kind of administrative work, right? Sure. And um, when you're in the middle of that, you sort of lose sight of the fact that, oh, you know, we're actually going to be playing this amazing <laughs> music. Right. And so uh, we had our first rehearsal, and it was about a six, five hour or so rehearsal, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the guests come in, they start to filter in to practice their songs with the band. And, you know, then you just kind of sit back and relax. You're like, oh, yeah, that's why we do this. Right. It's because of these amazing, talented musicians that come in year after year. And let's talk about them. Who do you got this year? I mean, you've had people come. You had a guy come from Italy last year or the year before? He'll be back. His, oh, no his, kidding. His name is Al Deason from Sardinia, Italy, and he approached us. This has been a, a bit of a problem in the last uh, five to ten years, the number of re requests we get from people who wish to play. Wow. Um, it's, we're more, Renee and I are both more players and performers and writers than we are producers. Sure. And so the, uh, the job of having to say no to well-intended and talented people is a terrible job, and, it, and we struggle with it every single year. Um, uh, but I'll put that aside for a second and say who's going to be in the band. Our, our band is our core band, Hard Rain. On guitar, it's Kirk Macon, a man who you have to see to believe. You'll see him on rooftops rolling around in the <laughs> dirt, uh, playing Not just guitar. for the heck of it, he's actually playing the yeah, guitar yeah, while as, he's doing that. As an that. extension yeah. of his performance <laughs> style, yeah. Uh, and uh, on the bass guitar, we've got Steve Whalen, a wonderful bass player, uh, and, and he's all-around musician. On the drums, Ido Tancredi from Italy as well. Right. And Davey Allen on the organ and piano and acoustic guitar. He's a local guy. And he uh, he plays keyboards for Eric Burden. Mm, okay. Right, right. And let's see. Of course, probably the, the highest profile player we have is our pedal steel player, Marty Rifkin. Now, Marty has a, a pedigree that's a mile long, mm. but a couple of the highlights are that he toured the world with Bruce Springsteen as part of the Seeger Sessions band. Oh, wow. He plays just about every instrument known to man, and he plays them all well. He's also our producer of the last, I think, eight albums of original material and all, all the CDs we've done. Right. And just a very close friend and mentor, and I can't say enough good about him. And then we have um, Joe Cacavo. He's kind of our utility player. Um, he plays banjo and guitar and uh, he's mandolin. mandolin. So he's he's a, a really important part of the band. And then on saxophone, we have Jeff Delasanti. He plays sax and flute, and he's he's an incredibly great player. So that's kind of the core band, along and then, with Andy and I. And then you have various musicians come up with yes. that core band and, and perform the songs, right? Some, sometimes we'll have a full self-contained band like belly love a couple of girls uh lisa and tony, tony and, and they're great a adam steinberg on drums and they, yeah they rock really hard uh, they're a real crowd favorite a band called dry september uh, pillow of wrongness the title trackers these are all self-contained bands all great and then we have individuals who will come up and maybe they just sing and Hard Rain is the backing band. Great. And uh, this year we're going to have the fiery frontman Bob Malone, <laughs> a piano killer, great singer-songwriter <laughs> himself, 
and he's really made a name for himself in the last five years. He is John Fogarty's piano player. Oh wow! But you and he and he he's wonderful to watch with John Fogarty. He's uh, very charismatic, but you really have to see his own show to to hear and see what he's capable of delivering. He'll be playing Tangle Up in Blue in Highway 61. Yeah, we have uh, James Lee Stanley. He's um, been around and really made an impact on the folk scene. Susie Glaze of the Susie New Folk Ensemble. She's fantastic. Mm. Um, Dave Crossland is a powerful uh, singer, songwriter, guitar player. He'll be doing a solo as well as fronting the band. And- uh, we have a few... Uh, players returning um we've got steve craig who has been yes. living and he's, he's played at dylan fest years ago but he, he was in the uh the Beatles show at in las vegas for 10 four. years oh, yeah great and then he moved to hawaii he but, was john lennon uh, in the fab four <laughs> yeah and he's great and he'll he'll be performing he's back in town um and then we have jamie daniels from the band the jack of hearts which is a dylan tribute band and right. he's fantastic and these are just obviously a few of the people, right? Um, you know, Patty yeah, Orbeck's done it for we years. We would be here Terry all day. That's right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. There's yeah. over right. uh, 50 musicians uh, playing. Joel Raphael is a, uh, a a stunning, intimate performer. He's going to be doing uh, Boots of Spanish Leather, oh. and uh, he sent us a version, and because he wanted the <laughs> band to to back him up. And we sat there, me and a couple other guys who were writing the charts, and we're listening to this phone recording. And we're just looking at each other, going, "No, we, we <laughs> nobody should play anything. This is stunning. Just the let way him it do is. it. Yeah. Uh, but he wants his backing, so we're going to uh, do the best we can not to ruin his uh, <laughs> his perfect performance. One thing I do want to when you mentioned writing the charts, so um, it used to be when we had it in the backyard, and it was just you know all volunteer and. You know, just people came over sure. and brought stuff and hung around all day. I mean, we set a PA up and all that. And people, a lot of the people who played were pros, but it was a little looser. And so at some point, Andy started writing charts for the songs. And so, you know, it was this many, you know, it was a small binder of charts. And then it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. And so it, now it's this huge book of charts of hundreds of songs by Bob Dylan. Wow. And... um most of them have been Andy Hill charts. That's in air quotes. Yeah. Um, where you know it's if you if you kind of know the song and you can play, you can sure. follow the chart. Now, if you're uh, more um, uh, m- m- st- if you're stickler for you know like measures and things like that, right. you know you actually want to see a staff, a treble clef, or something. Um, you might not like an Andy Hill's chart. <laughs> I, I personally think they're incredibly oh. useful. But that yeah. being said, Bob Malone, oh, did I say his name out loud? <laughs> um, you know, he likes to have things a little more uh, spelled out. So over the years, you know, Andy got this new program. And now this year, Steve Whalen, our bass player, is really great at uh, writing charts on the so computer. So you re- real charts now. Yeah, he's a code writer. He's one of these guys. Oh, you know, okay. That, that type of a guy so he doesn't want to have a beat that's unaccounted for anywhere right so. yeah so anyway so i guess mostly my point is that the amount of work that andy and now some cohorts have put in i think joe Kakava was helping yeah. this year is too um is really immense and what and has you know resulted in this huge book of of charts and which is fantastic because right. it's a resource right oh sure yeah and so that way you know everybody knows what they're playing but i think you need to tell them about the joel Raphael with trying to figure oh, out yeah. his so, chart. so i get this uh this phone uh recording and joe and i joe is the guitar player mandolin banjo we're trying to figure out what joel is playing on the phone and I'm saying, oh, it's a capo three in G position because I can hear this high note. And Joe Cacavo is saying, no, it's capo one in the A position because of blah. <laughs> On the low and note, yeah. So like 30 minutes into this, we're, and it's a three-chord song. Like right. We can't quite figure out what he's doing. So finally I call Joel, the guy who sent the phone message, and I said, you know, we can't figure out what you're playing here. And he sends me a... Uh, 
photograph on his phone, and it's his guitar with two capos on it. Oh, which, tricked you. To people who aren't musicians, that's like a shaggy dog story. You're going, what? I don't get it. But if you're a musician and you got a photo with a guitar with two capos, you know, one covering these strings and the other covering those strings, and, you know, that explained the l loss of 45 minutes of our life. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing says folk music like two capos <laughs> right, on your right. guitar. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, well, listen, I'm going to let you guys go, but let's go over the details one more time. Can All never right. do that enough. And uh, send you on your way and send everybody out to Dylan Fest on Sunday. Yeah, it's um, one thing I wanted to mention. It's a family-friendly event, all ages, um, and you can come and go as you please. So if you need to leave and, you know, go run an errand, let your dog out, and uh, you can come back later. And we encourage you to come and stay as long as you can. Um, you'll be shocked and amazed at how much you enjoy the people there, the music there. And um, we look forward to seeing everybody on Sunday. It's Sunday, May the 6th. The show is from 12 until 8 p.m. It's $30 in advance. Get your tickets at andyandrenee.com or at one of our shows come into Orlando's tonight and have a piece of pizza or ports of call on, on Friday. Friday right yeah. Um, yeah so and it's at the Torrance Cultural Arts Center so if you've ever been to Torrance and uh, you had to do jury duty or maybe you were arrested perhaps <laughs> yeah. uh, we welcome <laughs> felons as well um, it's right there on the corner of Torrance Boulevard and Madrona right adjacent to the James Armstrong Theater and plenty of parking it's free easy parking. free parking it's 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 just a, it's a no-brainer yeah it really is a no-brainer and I hear it's supposed to be a beautiful day. Well, it is going to be. <laughs> There's no question in my mind. Andy and Renee, I want to thank you again for uh, coming in and uh, sharing an hour with me. And, and uh, looking forward to seeing what, what goes on again on the 28th Annual Dylan Fest. Thanks, Thanks so for much. having us, Mike. Thanks, Mike.